back once again. Uh, today we are going to be taking a look at something that is incredibly useful, that I did not use enough before, and now I can't really do anything without it. We are obviously talking about YAL snippet. Now snippets, uh, a lot of IDEs, a lot of text editors uh, support snippets in one way or another. Uh, it's just that I feel like with Emacs it's really easy to not only use those, because it's the entire premise of the package, right? Snippets are obviously going to be easy to use, uh, but also very easy to edit them and add some yourself if you'd like. It's very easy to override them. Um, I did not like some, so I just I just changed them. Very, very simple. So, where do we start? Uh, let's install the packages we need. What I have, have open uh, some tables. Okay. The package is called Yas Snippet. This is the the biggest snippet package for Emacs. I have been looking for alternatives just to make sure that I am using the best thing out there. I haven't found anything coming even close to this. Now, let's install the yeah, snippet real quick. Um, Jesus. There is a little issue, and the issue is that the yeah, snippet by itself doesn't have any snippets. <laughs> it doesn't uh, really have any. Well, that's not a big deal. Now, technically, all you need to configure it. All you have to do is ensure it's enabled and then add some hooks. Because the way it works is, I really prefer to have your snippet being enabled per mode. So you just add hooks to the modes you use for programming, and then you have your snippet enabled. There is, as far as I know, a global mode. Actually, yeah, there is a global mode. But honestly, sometimes I just hit tab. Because this is how you expand the snippets. Sometimes I just hit tab and then ERC buffer and then I get like silly, silly snippet completion. Not my type of deal. The way we can solve this is with another package called Yas Snippet Snippets. We only want the second package to be installed when we actually install this one. Or when we load this one. So for the configuration, I'm going to add another use package statement. And uh, what we are going to be installing is yes snippet snippets, just like this. And we are going to ensure that it's installed. Uh, this, this looks kind of ugly, I believe. This is exactly how I have it in my configuration. And the last thing we need to do, just to make sure that yes snippet sees the new snippets, is called yes load all, just like this. Let's evaluate this. Very well. Uh, yum. You don't need to run yas reload all. However, I have found there is, I don't know if it's an issue or if it's a bug or if it's intended behavior, but if you add your own snippets, they are not going to work until you run uh, the reload command or use or like force or save them. You have to enter each file and then save it. Now that's, that's stupid. This one line uh, fixes everything. Now, how does this work? In every buffer, you can run mx and then yas describe tables, as you can see right here, and it's going to show you all the snippets that you can use. What happens is, you have the name, which is um, mostly going to only tell you exactly uh, what is going to happen, then you have the key that you need to actually input. After a key, you hit tab, so if I do ah, oops, ah for add hook, I hit tab, this is what I get. Now you can t see that the word name is already highlighted. So I can start typing and it's going to override it. I can also just control D and then write. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you like. You can add a hook. The thing is, after I'm done, I hit tab. I go to the next portion. Now these portions or where your cursor lands are predefined in the snippet. We are going to take a look at the snippet in just a second. How it looks, how it's uh, created. Or actually, I'll show you one of mine, uh, that will be easier to understand. And you can add some function. That's just how it works. You can... Um, the nice thing about these snippets is that you can cycle or move between these important points just with tabs. So if you have, I don't know, uh, defun, right? Or functions. You type in... No, oh, this one is actually mine, I think type in a function, and you type in the arguments, and then the content. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, no, no, this one is, a, this is not mine. I wrote the similar one for Lua. So yeah, pretty much this is about it. I like, the, I like the comment block, by the way, because when you type it automatically adjusts. It doesn't really work well when you only have half a window, but I really like these somewhat silly snippets. They save you time. So there is that. Now let's go to the important part, because um, enabling snippets or installing snippets like this is only one thing. Now you need to enable them. And while you can, again, enable them globally, I don't think it's a very good idea. So you can add hooks, for instance, for, well, for every mode where you'd like to have your snippets, I have, for instance, Lua mode hook, I'm going to be calling yes minor mode. Evaluate this, add this to your configuration, obviously substitute Lua mode with whichever mode you like. And you can tell, um, yes, snippets enabled. I have it enabled for Lisp interactions as well, for Elisp, for, I don't know, Python, I don't have it enabled for C. Let's take a look at how a snippet actually looks like. Now these snippets are, if you installed it from Melpa, you are going to see them in your snippet snippets, snippets, and you have all these modes. Um, every mode obviously signifies where these snippets are going to work. So if we take a look at, uh, what did we use? Emacs Lisp. Emacs Lisp mode, let's go for to add hook because this is the one we uh, we had seen and this is what it looks like mode snippet this one is actually important this is what tells uh, emacs that this is a snippet the contributor um you know this one was written by jolly or it's Gali. and that's that's it you can actually omit this the important parts are name and the key uh, you can have multiple keys, which is good, because you can act, you can either type AH and then hit tab, or add hook, then hit tab. And this is what's going to happen. This is just plain text, which is great. And this is where your cursor is going to be, these like mm, shell variable looking uh, regions here. The numbers obviously signify in which order tab is going to move you through the function or the snip. After the colon, you can specify some default text. You can omit this, so you could just do this. This is also going to work. You don't, you don't really have to, but uh, you, know, you, you don't need default values. Two and three. Now the zero, the zero is a bit special. As you can see, it is at the end. And let me um, let me show you what zero does. So when we do add hook, we type in some hook name, some function. And if I hit tab again, it moves you to the zero. This is where it ends. If we and let's do this real quick. If we get rid of the zero and let's save this, it's going to actually automatically load it. If I do an add hook now. The tab moves me to the next character, uh, to, to the next line, right? It doesn't stay there. This is the zero is especially useful if you um, hang on. Do I have something? Because if you specify your own ones in your Emacs D, all you need is a snippets directory, and then I have like Lua mode. Yeah, the function one is important. The function uh, snippet for Lua for my setup has this magic zero. What it does is it asks for the function name and the arguments and then the snippet's pretty much over. It only moves my cursor to this position and it's done. So if I do, if I open a Lua document, if I type in fun, hit tab, and I can type in anything, tab doesn't do anything anymore. This is, the snippet's over. All right, the snippet's over. This is why the zero is kind of important. This is how you can signify that the snippet is, or where the snippet ends, and where the cursor should land once you're done editing said snippet. Ooh. Obviously, um, you don't know all these snippets, so again, yas describe tables. Um, these are actually very, very useful. If you enable 
the snippets for a lot of modes you won't know um, all the all the keys to all the snippets from the get-go so again just make sure that you um, that you reload all your snippets add the hooks and then use the as described tables to learn how to use them because once you do you will be a lot uh, more efficient a lot faster with your editing there is not much more to snippets really I initially wanted to make like a full-blown video where I add a lot of hooks show you a lot of snippets but that's kind of pointless that will be wasting your time you have all these snippets described you can write your own ones just make sure that when you do um, you can see that I have this snippets directory and I have Lua mode you need to actually create new directories and name them the same as your major mode that you are going to be hooking or uh, that you're going to be adding a hook for so if I wanted to add um, I don't know some Python um, snippets I would have to create a directory in my snippets directory called python-mode and then add the snippets there if you create a snippet that has the same name and the same key as a snippet pre-installed by say uh, yeah snippet snippets it's going to be overwritten so yours takes precedence which is important because some of them are bad and then you want to um, you want to improve them but you don't want to improve them every single time you download the uh, snippets snippets or whenever something updates thank you for watching i hope you are going to be using yes snippets because i mean it's really it's really nice if you have any questions please comment down below and i'll get to it as quickly as i can until next time goodbye